Well, it's a bit of a rerun of what we saw last year. Remember, going to December, December uh, or, or September to October, we saw enormous electricity shortages in China, uh, more to the south. Now it's more to the west, uh, Sichuan area, and that impacts supply chains because there are key uh, electronics producers, for example, around Chengdu, and any reduction in output, of course, ripples through supply chains. Now, it's probably not on the same scale as we saw last year, but it's just a reminder of how fragile global supply chains still are. Narrative enough now to encourage some companies to, again, further think about relocating outside of China. And we're just covering today one company that is looking at uh, moving some of their activities from China to Vietnam. Do you think this is something that is continuing to gain momentum? Well, possibly, although we have to uh, admit that actually power shortages are a global problem and not just for mainland China. We have in other ASEAN economies in South Asia as well, periodic uh, interruptions in electricity supply. There's just a, a reality here, and that is that as we move towards other energy sources, there is potential disruptions over time. We have very high fossil fuel prices, and that's really impacting everybody anywhere. Um, but of course, uh, there is a move of some uh, production out of mainland China into Southeast Asia, but that's really part of a long-term trend that's still uh, really playing itself out at the moment. Fred, uh, there's been so many issues reported around China as we talk about the property market being one issue that we're just talking about the energy situation, but demand is another uh, inflation uh, in, the, in the mix too. What do you make of the, the challenges China is facing here and what the number one issue is for the mainland market? Well, it's really demand, 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 because on the domestic size, consumers just aren't spending enough, uh, whether it's on goods or whether it's buying apartments. So it's a domestic demand component, which is really not revving up. And the risk here is that on the external side, you will see ex Export slow in the coming months. Some of the lead indicators, in fact, suggest that electronics demand is weakening. Globally, trade will slow, and that puts even more pressure on domestic demand. And here, uh, the Chinese authorities are trying to add a bit more stimulus, um, but it hasn't really gained the traction as of yet that one would ordinarily expect. So we actually expect, therefore, uh, them to try to press the uh, stimulus pedal even harder in the coming months, particularly on the, on the fiscal side. That's fascinating because China for a while was trying to um, crack down on the spiraling property market, try to actually um, put a little bit of the brakes on the property market. Now, as you said, they're trying to stimulate it. And part of the problem with demand is that Chinese consumers are not buying goods. They're not buying apartments. What is the strategy now from Chinese authorities with regards to the property sector? They seem to kind of want the best of all worlds. Well, I think we probably slammed the brakes a little bit too hard and the, the, the car was uh, skidding almost off the road. Now it's really the, the idea here is to stabilize things, to keep things on the straight and narrow, if you will. And that uh, is really at the moment a question about securing funding for developers. That's kind of the, uh, the weak part at the moment. Uh, there's more that the central bank uh, can do, for example, to help provide liquidity, targeted liquidity into the real estate sector. Um, but of course, it's also about improving uh, consumer confidence. Uh, they're starting to hold back purchases and just reassuring buyers that really their uh, uh, the purchases will be honored. It's going to be key in terms of stabilizing that sentiment. It probably will take a few more months before we see that stabilization set in. Uh, so don't expect a V-shaped recovery just yet when it comes to Chinese real estate. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.